Hey everyone, are your kids trying to figure out what to get your mother, their mother for Mother's Day? Have them build this nice little birdhouse in a couple hours. No fancy angles, no fancy tools required. Let's get building. You know, I made these super simple. So you and your kids can do this together and give your their mother a great little Mother's Day gift that they made themselves. You can paint it any way you want. This is made out of cedar, so you don't even have to paint it. So all that you're gonna need is if you don't have a lot of fancy tools, you don't have a brad nailer, you can just use some finishing nails, right? Hammer and some finishing nails and some glue. Now the glue, you can use wood glue, but you may want to use some outdoor glue adhesive, right? But the finishing nails should be fine by themselves, right? Now, the bottom, you want to put a screw in each side. This way, at the end of the season, you can unscrew it and get the old nest out, right? Uh, no angle on the roof pitch. This side is 5 8 inch uh, longer than this side, so they both are e equal on the overhang. So I'm going to show you how to build this with your children for Mother's Day. Super quick and easy and super fun. So let's get to building. For this project, I'm gonna use brand new cedar since kind of have you guys learn to buy, to make something for a Mother's Day, right? So don't wanna use old fence boards, you know, all beaten up and worn out and stuff like that and that's fine but you want if you're gonna have the kids do it you want to sit here you know everybody knows how long and then uh, annoying sanding is so we don't want to have to have sand all these old boards so just go to your store this is cedar in Canada here Ontario uh, it's ten dollars one six foot cedar is ten bucks right so want to use just a normal fence board instead of cedar five bucks so okay so nice cheap uh, project uh, and one thing is if, if your your kids are making it the mother's gonna love it right it's uh, you know because they actually made it I know even myself for Father's Day if my boys made something for me instead of buy, buying it you know it doesn't matter how good it turned out how bad it turned out it means more right because they took the effort so I'm going to show you the easy ways to do it so if you don't have all like a chop saw or table saw you just got as a hand saw or a hammer and nails or whatever you can do that so we're, I'm not going to do any fancy angle cuts and stuff like that either um, something nice and sim simple okay so what we're gonna do is here, let me kinda, kinda hand drew this real quick here. Uh, it's just the first type of birdhouse I've made that's like this. So hopefully these dimensions will work out. If you saw my last video with the bird feeder, it's a similar um, side, except instead of being 20 degrees, I did 45 because um, it's easier to do uh, measurements, right? You don't, if you have one of these sitting at home, great. But a lot of people might not have these, even though they're only a couple dollars, right? So you can easily just draw it by hand and get the 45, right? Uh, with these dimensions, kind of gives it to you, breaks, and breaks down too. So as we go, hopefully these dimensions work out and we can get it to uh, all fit together nicely. Okay, so I'm gonna start cutting the pieces. Okay, see how quick that is. Um, I still gotta do the couple more cuts, but okay, here's your front and your back, 
And now I just got to cut the 45s. The two roof pieces, and I'll just have to cut one of them down, five eighths of an inch out down. Your two sides and your your floor. So obviously, hopefully, you have a little bit of sandpaper or something that you can get some of these edges off, right? Now, if you're using the jigsaw, you have less splinters, but more chance to, of it wiggling. So. Now, what you can do is if you don't have uh, a 45 square like this, like this uh, you can just measure down. To make this 45, we're going to get the center here. So, some boards might be different. So, this is five and a quarter. So, you got to get the middle of five and a quarter. So, half a five is two and a half so you want to go an eighth more right so you want to go two and five eighths to the middle okay so i don't want a huge mark but you can see you know, the little dot there and then if you have a 45 then you can well, you can do that what you can do is you can just put it off to the side Slide it up until you hit it, right? Once you get to it, just draw your line, right? So we can just draw our line here. I switch it over to the other side. Same thing, go up to the line, to that dot. Make sure you're, right, you're against the, it so it's flat. And then you draw your line. And there's your 45. And then you could just, like I said, you could take your jigsaw or your, your hand saw and cut them. And I'd be fine, right? So I'm going to do the other one and then I'll cut these pieces. Now I got one of them done. Now, if you want, instead of drawing that one, like you did this one with your hand and your measurements, you can just put it on top and then trace it. That way you get the exact same measurement, right? You don't have to, just another idea there if you wanna make sure that they match when you put them on the roof. It was like I, I was saying, it's uh, kids are building it and it's for, for moms and it doesn't have to be perfect. It's not a condo. You're not charging rent, right? So let's go on, cut this other piece and then we can start assembling. All right. So both of them are now cut. As you can see, pretty identical. So now what you want to do is before you start assembling, you want to put the hole. Now... Your normal hole should be about an inch and a half in diameter. If you want a bigger or smaller, um, I guess it would depend on the type of bird you want to use this, right? Um, there is a site, um, if you Google it, on what size opening a certain birds need, it'll give you that, right? So uh, I know there is one out there, I've seen it. So, but I'm going to do an inch and a half. Now, like with people that don't have all the tools, you may not have um, just an inch and a half cutter, right? This is an inch and a half Forstner bait. Probably don't have that unless you do a lot more woodworking. So what you can do is try to find, I guess, try to find something that would be an inch and a half, right? So you could take your measurements, look for, you know, here's a tea light candle. And that's pretty close, right? That's just under an inch and a half. So if you look at it, see, if you draw the circle there, 
you're you're going to be really close because you're not going to be able to draw it against it. Your pencil is going to be a little bit past on each all the way around. So good. Either even the battery ones are going to be very similar. I probably got a battery one here. Just like that. See, I got a battery one here. So let's check that diameter. It is same thing, an eighth of an inch short of inch and a half. So you could use these, find the center where you want it. So I don't want it too low. So see around here, draw your circle. Okay, so if you don't have a portion or a bit, and you don't have your hole cutter, right? What you can do is just take your drill bits, try to find one good size that you can. So obviously uh, you may not have even one of these that's an inch and a half. Usually the only the sets they come if you buy it if you buy a whole set, they only come as as large as one inch. So you may not get the inch and a half one. This is usually the one the biggest one you get. So what you can do is just try to find maybe your biggest one and dr drill a bunch of holes around the circle, right? So just you can drill a bunch of holes around that circle. Try not to go past that line. It doesn't have to be com completely circular. Or you could do a couple hole, a few holes and do your jigsaw right slowly because you don't want to break your, your your blade if you have a thicker blade right but if you put a bunch of holes you know it could be six or eight holes and then taking your jigsaw and, and smoothing it out right we could do that but i'm going to use my forstner bit i like that one best so um let's find the center uh, like I was saying before, five and a quarter, so go two and five eighths. Now, how high do I want to go? I don't want to go too high, right? So you want to, because you're going to have an overhang, about three quarter inch overhang here. You want a little bit lower, so I'd say right about there would be the center. And then we go from there. So we put a dot here at two and five eighths, right there. Okay. Now it doesn't have to be perfect, right? What I like to do first, kind of get that in there, is I'm going to drill a small hole where that dot is I just put in, right? And I like to have just have some spare wood around. Don't want to drill into the to the table, but I'll just drill this through. Right. Push it through. Okay. Now it'll give me a starting point because my Forstner bit's got a little bit in it, right? So it'll be able to fit nicely in there when I get going. So let me cut that, uh, this hole. A little tip, if you don't want it to splinter real badly, you can go halfway through this side, turn it around and drill the other half. So I'm going to flip it over and do this half. But forgot to mention though, we should clamp it down when you're trying to drill that hole just so it doesn't move around. Don't hurt yourself. No? See, no splinters on it. No splinters there. There was, I guess, a downside to the Forstner bit. It's that 
wood shavings go everywhere. It's kind of like, you know, when you use a router, wood shavings go everywhere, right? So this one here, if you had a, just the hole cutter, it would just cut that little hole right through and then you get that piece with the Forstner bit, it's ripping it all apart. So what we're gonna do now is I'm gonna sand down the edges here that need to be sanded. The front and the back, the floor is gonna be hidden behind. But on the sides, the the side panel is gonna sit on the floor. So I wanna be able to remove the floor each year and take the old nest out or else you won't get new birds, right? Uh, they won't go where somebody else's nest is. Oh, I don't want to uh, glue the floor because I want to be able to have it removed, right? So I'm going to figure out how to do this. So what we're going to do is I can glue, put this here and just have it sit and then put the walls together, okay? And, and then I can put the side panel onto these have everything else done and then do the floor later because we want to use some screws just so we can unscrew it and take the floor out when we need it. Remember how I said I just drew those quickly and we'll have to see if it works out. Well, I made this dimension from here to here, the width of a board, right? But I never took into account that the floor would sit inside. So it's not a huge deal. I could have the floor sit here if I want to, or I just take five eighths of an inch off this. So I decided to cut five eighths of an inch off. The only reason was is if I did them all to the bottom here then the floor wouldn't be large enough so because now i would be adding an extra five eighths on each side right uh, so i just take a, a five eighths on off of these so i'll adjust the dimensions uh, in in the drawings um and I'll show you the drawings here once I wrote it, write it down. And then I will even put it in the description with the proper dimensions. So now that I've cut these two down, I can glue them and nail them to the, the front and the back. Like I mentioned earlier, if you don't have a brad nailer, you can always just glue it. You want, you know, Put something together to hold them so if you don't have clamps maybe like um you have some tape kind of put them together like this kind of line them up you know and then with when you got the glue maybe throw some tape all, all around around it if you have to um just so you can get a couple nails in right so that the glue will, won't hold it while you're trying to put the nails in, right? So I'm going to put these together. So let's go get some nails. So what I like to do, if you have a clamp, it, it, it's nice, is I don't, I clamp it, but I don't clamp it super tight so I can line everything up, right? Make sure everything gets to the edges here, right? And then once I have everything where I want it, then I can either clamp it tighter or just start nailing. Okay, so I'm just gonna start nailing these. Okay, so the walls are nailed into it now and no floor, see? So now what we're gonna do, so we want the floor to be able to come out, right? So you can put the floor in Let 
Okay. Tight fit. And then you can just, if you want, just do a pilot height hole of a drill a screw here and screw here. That way at the end of the year, you can just go underneath, unscrew it, pull this out and get rid of the nest and put it back in for next year. So I'm gonna show you the roof too before I do the final floor. Okay, so I cut five eighths of an inch off of here. So now we can put the roof on. So it should be enough for about, I believe three quarter inch spacing on each one. Yeah, so it's about three quarter inch on both sides. So Okay, so the roof's all done now. Just gotta put it in the bottom. So just just gonna line it up and do it one of two ways. You can put screw in the front and the back here. Or you can do one underneath, but I recommend pre-drilling first. So I think I'm going to do underneath so you can't see it. As you can see, I drilled a couple holes here and I did even put a countersink in. Now I can put uh, a couple screws in and then that's it. Quick and easy. You can do it with your kids. Okay, remember how I said I was going to give you the updated dimensions? I almost forgot, but remember when the two sides here, you have to go four and five eighths. I had five and a quarter by five and a quarter. So now it's five and a quarter by four and five eighths. So you can keep it the width of, the, of your fence board, but just cut it at these two at four and five eighths. Okay, so I kind of labeled them. So these are the same size, just one's got a hole and one doesn't. So I got A1 and A2. These I did B and C because C is a different width. Remember, that's 5 eighths difference. D1 and D2, right, for your sides. And then E for your floor. So that'll be your cut list. So I'll put this in the description below. If you have any questions, leave in the comment section below. Hit that like and subscribe button. Hit that bell to be notified when I post another video. And we'll talk to you later.